Well, good morning. It's New Thought Talk. I am your host, the Reverend Steve Walling from the Spiritual Awareness Center, located in beautiful downtown Madera. I'm glad you're here with me today. This is another one of the one of, another one of those beautiful Saturday mornings down here in Fresno. A little foggy today, but life is good, and I'm glad to be here, and I'm glad you're here with me today. Today, I'm just going to kind of wander a little bit. I don't have a particular topic that I'm going to touch on, but I'm going to touch on various things that we've talked about in the past. You know, as you go through your life, you can either go through as a basically a victim of circumstance, or you can go through life as someone that has life kind of by the horn, so to speak, that you can plan and control a lot of what happens in your life. As a matter of fact, what happens in your life is no longer you being subject of the effect, but the effects being subject to how you perceive them. In other words, you can create a more positive life experience should you choose to do so. And it starts with some basic premise, and one of the basic, most basic of all premises is that we see something that we call spirit or universal intelligence or principle or first cause or God as a universal infinite beingness, not a being, but a beingness, something that is found everywhere, that there's no place, no space where God is not. And once we decide that we accept that as our reality, then we have to factor in certain things that oftentimes have gotten less by the wayside in the history of spirituality and religion over the years. And, and that is, if there is no place, no space where God is not, that means where I sit today, that there is God substance, God particles, God beingness that sits here as a part of me. That doesn't mean I'm God, and it doesn't mean that God controls me in the sense that I'm like a, a marionette puppet per se, but God and I are partners, just as God is you and, and you are partners, that, that we have a partnership as we go through life that as, as spiritual beings experiencing a physical expression that we call life, that we can call on this divine presence. But it's not outside of us. It's something that we have to go inside to find. And, and if you take the time to study the, the spiritual teachers going back through ancient history, you find that this has been an underlying theme, not always at the upper levels of consciousness of society during various times in history, but it's been there. If you look for it, you'll find it. You'll find it sometimes in teachers in mainstream Christianity or Islam or various other uh, religions like Hinduism or Buddhism or whatever, and sometimes you find it as just a separateness. But it's there, and it's there for a reason, and it's stayed there throughout the history of humanity because there's a substance and a truth to it. Oftentimes through the history of religion, religion has, get, has been uh, kind of overtaken by individuals that want to use it to control populations, uh, control belief systems. We see it in the world today where um, various Issues within the religious communities throughout the world have caused conflict in a human family that truly we are, are one. Even if you, uh, you could look at it two ways. If you want to look at it like uh, God created humanity all at once, or that humanity is, a, is a, an end result of an evolutionary process, we all come from the same source which means we're all family of some sort. We all may look different. We all may experience different uh, social uh, cultural diversities in our, our life, but we all really are all just a oneness. But we don't see it in the world, do we? And I'll bet you you don't see it in your world either. So as we talk about the things that I've shared w with you through you know these various shows, one of the underlying themes is this idea of a universality and a oneness. And, and once we, we open our, our, our minds and our hearts to that kind of a concept, then there's certain things that we can begin to ex explore and maybe experiment, experiment with. And, and these are things that, well, if God and I are one, if God is the creator of all, this, all that is, if God is the source of all that is, is there some way possibly that, that I can influence within my life the creation of things that I experience? And yes, you can. I'm, that's that's the message that we bring to the world. It's a message that, like I say, goes back throughout history, but it's a message that in order to make it work in our lives, we have to, we have to bring ourselves into alignment with, with certain understandings. And one of the first things that, that we have to understand is that we cannot take for ourselves where we take from somebody else. 
You know, that brings us into an opposition with, let's call it divine principle number one. And, and that divine principle number one was one of the things that, as Jesus was, was speaking through, uh, through to his disciples and the people around him so many years ago, he said, we must love our neighbors as ourselves." And, and there's no exception to that. And boy, that can be a real... That could be a real elephant in the room sometimes, particularly when we look at various things going on in the world. But forget the world for a minute. Let's just go to our family. How many times have you experienced in your family or in your neighborhood where you've interacted with people and it's, oh, geez, man, you know, can't we just flush them, get rid of them, you know, hate them or whatever? And the answer is no, you can't. Now, that doesn't mean that you become a, a doormat for somebody's bad behavior. We all have a right to, to create boundaries for ourselves, but we have to remember first that if God is, and I do believe that God is all there is, then that individual, no matter how despicable we may see them in our, in our day-to-day life or in the life of our nation or whatever, that, that individual is still a creation of the divine source. That is still a divine being. Now, the divineness within them, may be very deep and maybe let's just say for at ease of understanding may be very asleep but it's there nonetheless so as we deal with life we deal with situations we have to deal with them from within ourselves not from the outside and then try to translate that into something inside so one of the first things that we want to understand is this divine presence that's within us creates within us, if we bother to take the time to listen, it creates an urge within us to connect to itself, that we are here to express God, to express spirit or or principle, however you want to address it, and the greater that we can do so, the more we really fulfill our purpose for being here. Now, translated, that means the more successful that we live life, the more we're doing what God has intended us to do in this life. And success is defined many ways. It's defined not only monetarily, it's defined in health, it's defined in in harmony within our lives, it's defined within relationship. The list goes on and on. And really, in truth, success oftentimes becomes more of a personal understanding than a general term that we ascribe. But if you are not living life successfully, it's not because you can't, it's because you haven't You haven't made that connection yet, but that connection is there to be made. It's available to you. It's available to each and every one of us. And that's what we teach in this thing that we call New Thought, Religious Science, that there is a God, there is a power and a presence for good in the universe, and it is available to you. It's available to each and every one of us at the extent that we open ourselves up and allow ourselves to make use of it. I want to read you something here. It says, and this is from the, the book called The Science of Mind, written by Ernest Holmes. It says, we attract to ourselves the objective form of our subjective embodiments. The law knows how to make things out of ideas. We do not consciously know how it does, it does this, nor do we need to know how. But we do need to know that they are, and they have been, the law and God are and have always been there to do and respond to us. But it's in our thinkings, in our thoughts. Should we doubt this phenomena, we should, be th- we should be thought a little strange, maybe, if we take a good look at it. When we believe in the law of mind in the same way that we believe that the sun will rise tomorrow morning, we shall be surprised at the results that we shall receive. And when I say when we believe as the sun will rise tomorrow morning, I don't think there's anybody here that has any doubt that the sun will rise. And yet the sun never rises because... The sun is where it is. We rotate around the sun, but we've made that we've made that connection within ourselves that because we've been told as we grow up that the sun rises and the sun sets. No, the earth turns and we experience this rise and setting, but we believe it, and we believe it so intently and so intensely that there is no doubt. When I first said this, you accepted it completely. Now, after I've presented a little bit more of an understanding, you may go, yes, yeah, Steve, but and I understand that. But can you understand that there is a power, that God being everywhere, there is a power within you that is so infinitely, infinitely knowing and infinitely creative and infinitely filled with something that we call love. And it's not obviously a, 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 a familiar type love that we'd see in relationships. It's something so much more than that. But it's the creator of all that is. That Imagine for a minute. Imagine for a minute that God has created you as a part of God's self to express God in this life experience. Having 
conceived that, having thought of that, can you consider for a moment that, that the divine presence, what we call God, would create something to express itself and then shortchange it? Then put it in a place where it experiences lack, limitation, disease, poverty, and all the other things that we see in the world. And we do experience them in the world, no doubt about it. But why do we experience them? We experience them because within the human consciousness, we have accepted something that we call evil, something that we accept as poverty or less than this, something that we accept as lack, and we have created that within ourselves as a truth, if you will, that we believe. Imagine, imagine setting that truth aside. Imagine creating a different belief for yourself. Imagine creating a belief of abundance, of good, of a divine perfection that is available to you. Imagine that as you believe it is done unto you. As you imagine that, we're going to take our first break and we'll see you when we come back. Pasture grazed, delicious, nutrient dense, 100% organic raw milk from Organic Pastures. Visit organicpastures.com or call 1 877 raw milk. I was an addict, an opiate addict. The three years clean in October. I was renewed at the Fresno Rescue Mission. My mom, who does a lot of cooking, has been part of the rescue mission, has been willing to help teach people to make jams and jellies and other food. The Fresno Rescue Mission. And I believe that downtown Fresno needs a renewal as well. Tree of Life Cafe represents new, healthy growth in downtown Fresno. I've seen men and women go through rehab programs. They want to start a new life. And yet when they get out on the street, they find it very difficult to get a job. Nobody will give them a chance. That's what this cafe is designed to do. You will be like family to us. We will serve you our home-cooked food made with farm-fresh produce that comes from farmers right here in our valley. We, we love, love downtown Fresno. Fresno. Sunshine Natural Health in Tulare, California is your source for nature's best remedies. Call Sunshine Natural Health at 559-688-2063 and get healthy. If you're considering a reverse mortgage in the Central Valley or just want more information, contact Jerry Carmichael. She's experienced, and more important, she's local. Call 559-903-6903. Call Brian Cossack today at 559-977-1976. Protecting you and those you love financially. Make an appointment today. At Miracle Realty, we've been providing premier professional residential sales and property management in residential and commercial property for years. We manage single-family homes, condominiums, apartment buildings, commercial buildings, office space, and much more. No matter what experience level you have in property management, Miracle Realty strives to make your experience as stress-free as possible. Serving Madeira and the surrounding areas, we use the latest technology and provide top-notch service. We're a trusted and reliable name in residential sales and property management with the experience to answer any questions or complications that might come up. Give us a call today or visit us online for more information. Central Valley Talk. Well, welcome back. It's New Thought Talk. I'm your host, the Reverend Steve Walling from the Spiritual Awareness Center located in Madera, California. As we get started in this segment, I want to read something that I wrote a while back, and that is all life, all activity of life has been created by spirit or God to force us into self-activity so that it forces us to cease being just creatures of circumstance and to become creatures of creation and, to, and, and no longer a slave to something we call fear. And I've talked about fear in the past. Fear is not that, you know, uh, fear of the boogeyman per se. Fear is that physiological factor that evolutionarily has been hardwired into our brain. And it originally was a, a mechanism to create a protection, if you will, for the being. But as human society has progressed, that type of situation is no longer available, but it still plays out in our life. Fear plays such a big role in, in our life, and if you really stop and, and take stock of your day-to-day -day life experience, you may find that, that fear plays a much greater role than what even you assume, even if your life seemingly is, is pretty good. So 
One of the things that fear plays out in our life in so many ways, as I was talking about in the last segment, is this idea that of lack and limitation that we experience in our lives that I said that God didn't create that. All you have to do is, is look at the, the grains of sand or the beach, on the beach or the number of planets in the sky or blades of grass on your front lawn for crying out loud. You know there's an abundance everywhere. And there is abundance of food. There's an abundance of good substance. The thing is that we have got to avail ourselves to it. But we've been told. Oftentimes, how many of us have been told that if you don't work hard, you'll never succeed in life? If you don't work hard, you'll never uh, make an income? If you don't do, if you don't do, if you don't do, on and on and on. And this is part of the history, the race history of humanity that has held us into a consciousness of lack and limitation. But limitation is a condensation of an idea of want. Mind accepts this idea as though it were true and then makes it true in our experience. And that's how it that's how it plays out in our life. How many times have you heard you know, people talk about the power of positive thinking? I know that Dr. Norman Vincent Peale wrote that book many years ago, and, and if you can find it on a library shelf, I still highly recommend it. It's a little dated in its verbiage, but it, it teaches a powerful truth. There is a power in positive thinking. One of the things that we need to do as individuals is begin to realize that we have to stop thinking from ourselves and thinking about ourselves as we think. And if that sounds a little convoluted, let me explain. We go through our day-to-day -day life, and our beliefs, our experiences, the news, what we hear from our neighbors, TV, and so on and so forth, is that stream of consciousness that runs through our mind all day long. And you know, they say, scientists say, that we, we think somewhere between 30 and 80,000 thoughts throughout the day. And a majority of those thoughts, for most people, have a negative connotation. Believe it or not, that's truth. Enough research has been done to, to back up those statistics, and that's, that's incredible. Why live that way when you don't have to? Well, we do live that way because we live habitually. We think from ourselves, and we just allow that stream of thought, that stream of consciousness to begin to move through us. And boy, it can cause some real upsets in our life if we're not careful. Because as we think, we become, and as we become, we experience. And so there is a way to break that cycle, and that is to begin to think about what we think about, to become conscious thinkers, to become utilizers of this great power that we have. If God is within me, then what, what happens in my life, I become the operant power. The op I become the operator. I become the controller, if you will, of how that is expressed. And if I, if I keep my thoughts in a negative trend of consciousness, guess what is created in my life? But if I keep it and I move it in a positive direction, if I begin to break the habits of old, negative, limited thinking, if I begin to look at God as my source of all good, if I begin to, to, uh, to utilize this idea that the Christ spirit within me or God within me, with that I can overcome and, 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 and do all things with that, with that power. And you say, well, gee, Steve, that's, that's kind of a, a real stretch, but it's not. You can look back through history and you can see individuals that have found and have tapped that inner power, that inner strength, and as it played out in their lives. Some of those people we see as great spiritual leaders, but some of them are inventors, some of them are statesmen, and it goes on and on and on. As you begin to believe in yourself in the inner beingness that you are, that belief will begin to play out in your life. One of the key things that we need to do and to be aware of if we're going to do this, if we're going to start making changes in our life for good, there's certain, there's certain levels of things that we have to become aware of. And one of those levels of things we got to become aware of is how harmony begins to play out in our life. If we live a life of harmony, if we are in harmony with our surroundings, if we are in harmony with life, if we are in harmony on a spiritual level, life is fantastic. But in order to be in harmony, we also have to be in a place of acceptance. And one of the things I said in the last segment is that there, we're going to run into people, circumstances, situations in our life that we're going to go, you know, that's, that's not necessarily what I want to be involved with, associated with, or whatever. So be it. But find what you can within that individual, within that circumstance, within that thing. Find something that you can like about it. I don't care what it is. It may take time. You may have to look back at some kind of tragedy from the perspective of past time. But find the good that's there because in all things, in all things, good 
can be found. Because in all things, God truly is there. In all things, spirit is there. In all things, the creative source of all that is is there. Oftentimes, though, we experience it from a, a victim consciousness. We experience it from, from being subject to instead of being able to experience it as, as a, not a reaction to it, not a reflex, but as a participant that is participating from a consciousness of a divine presence that exists within us. And as we do that, things play out in our lives. We begin to experience things in such a, I can't begin to explain to you in the, in the, the different way that we begin to experience it, but trust me, it's there. Everybody that's taken the time that, that I have either read about or talked to or instructed, once they have begun to walk this path, their lives change and they change dramatically. You know, God is not some being that is way off somewhere that leaves us to 911 in the case of emergency. God is with us, walks with us, speaks to us, gives us insight, guards us, and guides us throughout our day when we begin to realize, open ourselves up to it. But in order to do that, we have to do that. In other words, we have to do it consciously. We can't just sit on the couch. And that's why when I opened this segment, I read, and I'm going to reread this once again. All activity of life has been created by God, by spirit, to force us into self-activity so that it forces us to cease being creatures of circumstance and to face our fear and to face life. And as we do these things, we grow. And just like, just like a muscle builder that begins to lift weights, what are they doing? They're pushing their muscles against a resistance. They begin to increase their strength. They begin to increase their stamina. Just like a, a long-distance runner as they practice day in, day out, and they build and they build and they build, that's the same process, believe it or not, that we need to do in our spiritual life. Our spiritual life is not something that we just leave to set by itself. Our spiritual life is an activity, a process that we have been created to participate in. And so if we're moving on, we find that there's certain things that we need to do to move on. And one of those things is to take time daily. As we take time daily to interact with our source, you know, teachers from times past have talked about going into the silence or meditating, or doing our prayer work, however you want to describe it, but taking time each and every day for ourselves and ourselves only and our relationship with our source. Finding that place, that space, where we can quietly sit and open ourselves up and just allow the mind to focus. We try to quiet the mind, and, and there's many different really good methods of doing a quiet meditative uh, process that allows you to participate in this. And I'm not going to spend time on that today, but if you want to email me at uh, Rev. Steve or Madera, S-A-C, at gmail.com, you can do that, or you can go to our webpage, Madera, S-A-C uh, dot com, and, and there's a way to, you know, connect with me. Any, any way you want, and I'll, I'll give you some instruction or, or point you in the right direction. But the point is, take time every day. Take time every day to spend in quiet time, to open yourself up, because there is a power and a presence that is available to you, but you've got to avail yourself to it. You can't walk through life and ignore that which is within you and expect that which is within you to be available to you just when you want it. So it's a process, it's a skill, and it's a skill that we can learn and we can grow in, and it's a skill that ultimately we can begin to master. Now, I've been talking with some friends of mine recently, and they, they, they're asking me about, you know, should we not constantly be questioning ourselves and our spiritual path? And my, my personal take on that is yes and no. As we're beginning to seek our spiritual path, Questions are good. Questioning ourselves, questioning the, the belief system that we're, we're working with is a very, very good and positive thing. But once, whatever it is, once we find a path that resonates with us, I don't know that questioning ourselves so much is as important as learning to master it. Because, you know, it's not, a, it's not set in stone. It's not going to be rigid. No matter what spiritual path you walk, you will evolve as you walk that path. You cannot help but to evolve because life, spirit, and God is infinite, ongoing, ever-progressing, and ever-growing. So 
Do we need to question ourselves once we're on a path? I don't think so. But do we need to question ourselves and the path as we're finding it? I think we do. But once we find a path, you begin to work it. And here's the thing, just like with meditation, you will find that there's one form of meditation that will work better for you than others, but find the one that works. You may have to try a couple, but find the one that works. And the thing about new thought is it is a path that allows us the, in my opinion, the greatest flexibility in creating and controlling our life. And at the same time, it, it, it requires that we make a very deep, a very deep and steep connection with our source, with the divine presence. It's powerful. We're going to take our next break, and I'll see you when we come back. Pasture grazed, delicious, nutrient-dense, 100% organic raw milk from Organic Pastures. Visit OrganicPastures.com or call 1-877-RAW-MILK. I was an addict, an opiate addict. The three years clean in October. I was renewed at the Fresno Rescue Mission. My mom, who does a lot of cooking, has been part of the rescue mission, has been willing to help teach people to make jams and jellies and other food. The Fresno Rescue Mission. And I believe that downtown Fresno needs a renewal as well. Tree of Life Cafe represents new, healthy growth in downtown Fresno. I've seen men and women go through rehab programs. They want to start a new life. And yet when they get out on the street, they find it very difficult to get a job. Nobody will give them a chance. That's what this cafe is designed to do. You will be like family to us. We will serve you our home-cooked food made with farm-fresh produce that comes from farmers right here in our valley. We, we love, love downtown Fresno. Fresno. Sunshine Natural Health in Tulare, California is your source for nature's best remedies. Call Sunshine Natural Health at 559-688-2063 and get healthy. If you're considering a reverse mortgage in the Central Valley or just want more information, contact Jerry Carmichael. She's experienced, and more important, she's local. Call 559-903-6903. Call Brian Cossack today at 559-977-1976. Protecting you and those you love financially. Make an appointment today. At Miracle Realty, we've been providing premier professional residential sales and property management in residential and commercial property for years. We manage single-family homes, condominiums, apartment buildings, commercial buildings, office space, and much more. No matter what experience level you have in property management, Miracle Realty strives to make your experience as stress-free as possible. Serving Madeira and the surrounding areas, we use the latest technology and provide top-notch service. We're a trusted and reliable name in residential sales and property management with the experience to answer any questions or complications that might come up. Give us a call today or visit us online for more information. Central Valley Talk .com. Once again, welcome back. It's New Thought Talk with your host, Rev. Steve Walling from the Spiritual Awareness Center located in beautiful downtown Madera. And today I'm just, it's kind of more of a stream of consciousness today. I'm talking about various things that are near and dear to my heart that someone that can... Um, that, that does become associated with it, the spiritual process we call new thought, things that they can expect to encounter, um, things where they can, tools that they can learn to uh, increase the good in their lives. And I could do this all day long, but we only have an hour a day, so let's move on forward. And so one of the things I want to uh, share with you is this idea that no good can come to us unless it makes its advent through the center of God's consciousness, which we are. The hope of destiny is latent in the slumbering thought, and the genius lies buried until the attention is winged with love and reason. Wow. That was Ernest Holmes. Basically, what he's saying is that which lies within us, that we can connect with thought, that we can connect as we work through our process, the spiritual process I was talking about in the last segment. It lies dormant there waiting for us. It lies there expectant. It lies there as a toolbox sits for a master mechanic waiting for the mechanic to come and open the lid and pull the tools out 
and I, I know this is very simplistic, and people oftentimes they, they get into this idea of spirituality and consciousness with an idea that we have to experience or express some kind of piety. But I don't believe God created us that way. I think, I think the most simplistic understanding is, is probably the most powerful one, and, and that is that that power is available to us when we learn how to, to avail ourselves to it. It comes through believing that it's there, recognizing that the belief leads to some deeper level of consciousness, that there's a part of our mind that is that part of our mind that is associated with good and with God, that we can go there and we go into our silent meditation and, and we do our prayer work and, and we begin and, and journaling. And there's various other tools, and I'll talk a little bit more about those too. But as we do this on a continuous, ongoing basis, we create within our own minds, our own lives, a potential uh, reality that will become manifest. It's really amazing when you watch it play out, but it does over and over again, for good or for ill. For someone that, that believes that there's no good in life, no good will come to them in life. For someone that believes that life will pr provide them with all the good they need, want, and desire, you can see it play out in their lives. It's just, it's, it's, I would say it's miraculous, but it's really just God doing what God does. And, you know, sometimes for me personally, I find that to be incredibly exciting. So, last segment, I was talking about this idea of going into the silence and doing meditation. And that's, that's a powerful tool, prayer work daily. What, what does that do? When we go into this silence, when we begin to do our daily prayer work, we, we're creating and affirming within mind our mind, and a greater mind, this good that's there, and, and we, we'll bring ourselves into alignment with it. As I said in the beginning, we can ask for most anything from God as long as we ask for it in alignment with God principles. And we cannot do that in a way that we take from another. If we do, we're destined to fail. It just it plays out. There is a law of cause and effect, and it is undeniable, and it will, you know, the ancients called it karma. It will come, and it will square with you unless you reframe and re-change your, your thinking, if you will. You reframe, and, and you, you change the way you experience things. You reframe, and what ultimately you do is you change your consciousness so that your consciousness is no longer one that accepts lack and limitation and so on, but it, it is a consciousness that sees the abundance and the good that's available to each and every one of us as we go through life. And it's very powerful. And as a result of that, you will see something that we call demonstration. And demonstration is a manifestation of that which we seek to express in our life. And there are ways through prayer, affirmative prayer, there are ways through uh, various things that we can begin to uh, actually use the creative force that is within us to demonstrate good in our lives. But in order to do that, we need to be, one, in alignment with divine principles. Two, we have to, as Jesus said, we have to pray believing, and as we believe, it is done unto us. And we have to be in a level of harmony with life. And uh, we have to, and this is a big one, it, it, it's, it's funny, you don't hear people talk about it too much, but it's, it's a, an extremely important part of the whole spiritual process, and that is the idea of acceptance. Acceptance. What does that mean? When we talk about acceptance, that means that we begin to live our life, we begin to watch our, walk our spiritual path without judgment towards ourselves or the people or the world around us. We accept the what is as being what is. And that doesn't mean we don't try to change to create better, but we accept it for what it is. We accept it without anger. We accept it without fear. We accept that it just is. That can be difficult in the beginning, but as you begin to walk your spiritual path, you will see that it really isn't that hard to accept the what is as life expresses for us. As we can accept that, then we open ourselves up to that divine presence within us to express itself through us and into our lives. As we can accept good in our life, as we can accept God's gift in our life, as we can accept harmony and peace in our life, we will see these things play out. It's, it's just, it's like clockwork, the way it happens. But getting there for many of us can be a real difficult process. And why is that? The reason why, for many, is very simple, but very deeply a part of who they are. And that is their underlying belief systems. 
when I say underlying belief systems, as people begin to move through life and, and decide that they want to create and accept and experience a better life and they begin to, to read and understand, they take classes and they, boy, this is really good, I want to put this into practice in my life, but they have an under, a deeper understanding belief within themselves that they grew up with that they haven't removed. And, and sometimes these are beliefs and understandings that may have been given to them as a child growing up. Something like, you can't succeed because, and fill in the blank after because, you're too small, you're too big, you're a boy, you're a girl, on and on and on. It makes no difference. That could be buried. That belief can be held within, excuse me, can be held within mind, and we're not even aware that it's there. So as you begin to start this process, this is where, as I said, I believe it was in the first segment, we have to begin to think, not from ourselves, but think, use our thought patterns to watch ourselves as we're thinking. Begin to catch yourself. When those less than, when those negative thoughts begin to arise within you, catch that. Stop it. You can tell yourself you want to erase that. You can tell yourself you refuse to accept it. And you replace it with a positive thought. And it's very simple, but it's a very, very powerful tool. So we have meditation. And we have thinking as we watch ourselves, thinking about ourselves, thinking about the way we think. Another tool that is a very powerful tool that you can use on a daily basis is the tool of gratitude. How many of us spend the day going through the day not thinking about the gifts and the good that we've had during that day, and we get to the end of the day, and we just write it off and we go to bed. Sometimes we might think about the, the stuff that happened during the day that we weren't so happy about. How about changing that? How about taking the end of the day, taking the end of the day, and re looking back at the day, reliving the day in your mind, and, and allow yourself to take note of all the things that happened to you during the day that you can be grateful for. And if something happened to you that you feel that you can't find the gratitude, find what you can like in that anyway. Begin to find something that you can be grateful for about it. Or oftentimes what some people do is they, they kind of rewrite the scenario, believe it or not. Even though it's just in their mind, there's a certain level of acceptance that takes place in the mind when we do this. So we go through as a process, a, a, a checklist of gratitude as we end our days up. And, and we, be, we be in that place, that space of, of thankfulness and gratitude. Take that time at the end of the day to maybe read something of a spiritual nature before you go to sleep, something that affirms the good in your life. And often times are also, I should say, Another very powerful tool that you can use is a tool of journaling. And journaling is something that we don't normally teach our kids to do, but, you know, if you have little children, it's, you know, the, I can remember growing up, we, we had diaries and stuff, but journaling takes diaries to a, a, a different level. And as we, as we go through our day in our mind at the end of the day, writing down our thoughts, maybe find a, an affirmation or something that we can, um, do a little prayer, a little meditation work, and then journal our thoughts about that afterwards. And you can do the same thing as you begin to start your day. How do you start your, how did you start your day today? Did you get up this morning and did you run that laundry list of all the things that you got to do and accomplish today through your mind and, and tick off the things that are going to be good and tick off the things that aren't going to be good and oh my gosh, what am I going to do? How about starting your day once again in gratitude? A simple thank you, a simple um, embracing the good for the day. In, you can do this even before you open your eyes. It's something that I do every day as I start the day. As, as my mind is just beginning to, to become conscious, I think about the good that is already mine from today, from source, from God. I think about the good that I'm going to experience today. In a very nebulous way, it's just an acceptance that that good is there, a knowingness that that good is going to be there. And then I do my personal self, I do a meditation, and then I do some prayer work, and then I do some journaling. And it's something that, that starts my day every day. And what that does is it focuses the mind. It helps set that conscious consciousness into place as we begin to 
change our habitual negative limited thinking and we open our minds up to an expansive and positive thinking and really don't we all want to experience that expansive positive goodness in our life don't we all want to experience a a healthfulness a an abundance a harmony and peace in our life if you answered yes to that doesn't it make sense that maybe today is the day that you can move forward and begin to do that it's just a simple choice. It really is that simple. Well, you got to follow through on the choice. You got to begin to work on it. You have to, to exercise this. As I said, you got to build the skill. You got to go and you got to grow spiritually. But as you do, you're going to see life changing uh, things happen on a daily basis. And it's really pretty incredible. So we're going to close up this segment now, and I'll see you when we come back. Rethink your drink with independent Javita member Christine Levin. Call 559-301-5177 and get healthy and wealthy. For information on author Steve Hammond's Rise of the Penguins saga, visit www.riseofthepenguins.net. Kissed by the Moon, your cloth diaper and natural parenting store. Call 559-231-7101 or visit them online at kissedbythemoon.com. Low testosterone affects most men. Dr. Kevin Lester discusses a testosterone optimization program. The top program is a testosterone optimization program designed to improve men's health and well-being. Men's testosterone, which diminishes gradually from the time they're about 30 or 35 to about the time they die, which is you know, hopefully 86, 87, uh, they gradually have less and less testosterone. Your belly becomes fatter, your blood vessels become worse, you become out of shape, you get grouchy. Come in for a free measurement, and then it's almost always insured. Almost all insurance companies cover it, including Medicare. But it's free to come in for the first consultation. After that, even if you're a cash patient, it's $140 a month. Find out more about the testosterone optimization program by visiting tophatmed.com or calling 559-431-2332. Mike Briggs Properties sells homes in the Tower District and throughout Fresno and the Valley. Did you know we also sell businesses? Why work to build someone else's business when you could build your own? The small businesses we have for sale include restaurants, professional practices, and you can even own your own TV show. This week's featured businesses include an established pizza by the slice business in the heart of the Tower District and also available a laundromat in Van Ness Village. If you are interested in owning a business, call Mike Briggs Properties at 486-6758 and ask for details. Looking for a travel agent? Look no further. Bianca Echeveste can make your travel dream a reality, even on a budget. Visit ilovemytravelbiz.com or call Bianca at 559-284-2217. Well, welcome back. It's New Thought Talk. I'm your host, the Reverend Steve Walling, from the Spiritual Awareness Center located in downtown Madera. And we've had a good show today. I'm going to take this segment of the show uh, to uh, talk about something that I have had the extreme honor and pleasure to be involved with. This, is, this has been a real, this is how spirit works in our lives, how God unfolds for us. As, as I've mentioned many times, I do a, a daily journal and I do daily meditations. And I, I make this available to, to people via the Internet. And it's been just a, a, it's been a work of my heart, a passion, if you will, to do this, to share this. And I've been doing it for quite a while now. And it's been a, a while ago, middle of last year, thereabouts. The date's not really that important, but... Uh, a fellow got a hold of me, Reverend Richard Lode, he's from the Midwest, and he said, you know, Steve, he said, I've been collecting uh, the journal posts that you put up, and he said, I would like to put them in a book format. And I thought, well, that's, that's pretty awesome, you know. So we talked about it, and he, he messaged me with some pictures of book covers and stuff, and, and I said, go for it, and, and he did. And it ended up... Uh, not being a book, but we now have 12 books, and I'm going to go through and, and show you how this works. Because actually this, this is a system, if you will, or a 
a toolbox for your daily spiritual practices for those people that would like to to begin to grow or even for old timers that are are looking for something to add to their spiritual life now i have this this is a copy of the january edition or volume of the book and there's like i say there's one for each month and each month they have a, a different name this is january a gift uh for the new year uh, but you can buy for, you know, now that we're moving through the years, you can get them for, you know, February, March, and so on and so forth. They're available. Uh, I believe there is a link listed at the bottom of the page where you can go, or you can actually go to Amazon if you uh, type in Rev. Steve Walling and, and look it up. You'll find it there also. And the thing is, like I said, this is, this is a tool that you can use. And, it, and what you do is for each day, there is a quote from one of our early New Thought pioneers that I've taken. And there's so much good and so much insight that's, that's there. And then for that particular day, I'll write a commentary, or I have written a commentary, for my thoughts on what that particular quote means and applying that in our, in our current daily life. And those are powerful tools to focus our mind and to bring us into harmony, if you will, with what's going on within our spiritual practice. And then at the top of the next page is an affirmation for that day. And what a great tool that is to start our day with or start your day with, or something that you can use to to incorporate within your meditation as you're going through that day, or just to utilize throughout the day as an affirmation for your good. And then below that, there, is, there are lines for you to journal in. So this covers many different things. It helps us to focus our mind. It helps us to, to uh, in our meditation, to give us something to work on. It gives us an affirmation through the day. And then it also allows us to, to do a journaling process. And I am so thankful to Reverend Lode for, for putting this together. And you know, I've been more just a recipient of this good than a, an actual participant. But it's been fun, and it's been... Uh, it's, it's been a real blessing to me, and it's been a blessing to other people. I've, I have people that have purchased these books, and they're utilizing them, and they've shared with me the impact that is made on their daily life uh, spiritual practice. Because, let's face it, for most of us, we're out there in the world, and we don't have necessarily a daily guideline to work from. And this gives us something to, to start with. Now, that's not the end-all, be-all. There should be more that you'd include in your, excuse me, in your day-to-day -day life, but this is a good place to start. And I'm, like I say, I'm honored and proud to be involved with this. It says, Dr. Steve Walling is the Senior Minister of the Spiritual Awareness Center in Madeira. He hosts an online TV show, surprise, surprise, New Thought Talk with Rev. Steve, and has been invited to speak in many centers, churches, and I've also had the opportunity to speak na internationally, which has been good. So we have this available. We got this book, and all you have to do is order it and begin to use it in your daily practices, and you will see some changes if you do that. It doesn't get any easier than that, and for those of you that have not been um, really connected with New Thought, it's a great way to introduce yourself to that. And along those lines, I want to take this time now to share with you there are a couple of websites that you can, you can access that will help you as you make your spiritual journey. And one of them is called NewThoughtLibrary.com. And if you go there, you'll find m many, many, many pioneers in the New Thought movement and their writings that are there that you can, you can read, you can download. Um, it's just a wealth of information that I highly recommend for people that are looking. I mean, let's face it, trying to build a library sometimes can be rather difficult. It's not exactly inexpensive, and sometimes we don't know if we like a particular author or not. It's a great place to go to to kind of test drive some of these authors, if you will, but it's also a place to go where there's a wealth of powerful spiritual information that you can incorporate in your life. And then, then another page that you can go to, and this is put together by an organization called Serving New Thought, and it is called findacenter.com. If you go there, you will be able to go online. You can look on the map uh, no matter what part of the world you're in. They will have the listing of at least how, how you can contact the nearest New Thought uh, Center or church in your area or maybe nearest to you, depending on how far that away that may be. But you can look them up and you can contact them and you can utilize that 
to maybe make your connection where you're at. And that's a powerful tool. If you happen to be a member of a New Thought Center, you can go there and you can check out the, the listing for your particular center. And there are ways that you can participate, and it's, it's all listed there on the page, but you can participate in enhancing the listing that's there, creating more information, and, and possibly inserting links. So that's a powerful tool for, for center and church building also. So you can look that up. Um, those are powerful, powerful tools. Now, for myself, you know, I've been doing this show, and of course now we have the, the book. Um, I am the senior minister at the Spiritual Awareness Center located in Madeira, and we've been an ongoing spiritual center there since like 1994. And it's, uh, it's quite an experience. But all of this, it takes time and it takes money, and the money that we receive from the people that have donated, I want to take this time to give thanks to you for that. As you have supported us, you have allowed us to do things. We're in the process of moving right now, and, and in that move, it's, you know, the support we've been getting is really great. So those of you that have gone to our webpage, or those that you would possibly like to go to our webpage, which is the uh, Spiritual Awareness Center page, it's MadeiraSAC.com or SpiritualAwarenessCenter.org. You can go there and you can find a link for PayPal and you can make a one-time donation or you could set up for an ongoing donation. We have people that have done both and I give thanks as you have supported our ministry and allowed us to continue to do what we do, including presenting this show to you. So it's, uh, it's a win-win situation, if you will, and I want to thank you for that. And I think that pretty much wraps up our show for today. So as we close out, I want to tell you, as I always do, that the light of God surrounds you. Don't forget that. The light of God surrounds you and the love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you and the presence of God watches over you. For truly, wherever you are, God is and all is well. Make your life great. The choice is yours. You have the power. Blessings, my friends. We'll see you when I come back. Rethink your drink with independent Javita member Christine Levin. Call 559-301-5177 and get healthy and wealthy. Are you a first-time home buyer or investor? Realtor Amy Braun can introduce you to a special program tailored just for you. Call Amy Braun at 960-4155 or visit amyhbraun.com. Need raisins? Call National Raisin Company at 559-834-5981 or online at nationalraisin.com.